Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A light pole down in a storm. It's still down, keeping neighbors here in the dark. Packed students break into the Bloomfield Hills School's computer system, and they mess with a whole lot more than just grades. But we'll begin here at 5 with this man formerly charged for shooting a driver who was blocking his parking spot in Ann Arbor. Good to have you with us today at 5. Jacob LaBelle being held now on a quarter million dollars bond after police say he opened fire outside of Walgreens. Police say LaBelle's car was blocked in by a delivery driver at the corner of State Street at North University, and that's when things went sideways. Coco McAvoy shows us how it all went down. Coco. We all know parking in Ann Arbor can be frustrating and difficult, and that led to a scary altercation this week. This is one of the busiest areas in Ann Arbor, filled with shoppers, residents, and students like John Peshnaru. He saw lots of commotion Monday night. And a lot of fire trucks, a lot of police vehicles uh, rushing to the scene. Um, didn't find out until a little bit later what exactly had happened. There was a shooting in the middle of the street over a parking spot. This incident all unfolded on the University of Michigan campus Monday night. Let's show you exactly where this happened. Police say Jacob LaBelle was parked right in this area on North University and South State Streets outside of Walgreens. But then a delivery driver came to make a stop blocking LaBelle in, and police say that's when an argument started and then the shooting happened. This is 24 year old Jacob LaBelle. He's now formally charged in the shooting with assault with intent to murder, carrying a concealed weapon, and felony firearm. Uh, involves uh, not only the discharge of a firearm, but the shooting of another uh, human being. Prosecutors say LaBelle shot the delivery truck driver in the torso. The victim is very lucky to be alive. LaBelle's attorney argued he has a disorder. Mr. LaBelle suffers from PTSD uh, as a result of being the victim of an assault, serious assault himself. LaBelle is now being held on a $250,000 bond after an alarming incident on the University of Michigan's campus. And police say LaBelle did call 911 himself and they arrested him. They also searched his car. They say they found another gun inside of his car along with ammunition. He'll be back in court next week. Back to you. So, Coco, what do we know, if anything, about the delivery truck driver and how he's doing after being shot in the stomach? Yes, Kimberly, so we know the delivery truck driver is a 43-year-old man from Ohio. At last check, he's doing much better. Of course, he's in serious condition. As you heard the prosecutors say, he's really lucky to be alive, but they say he is up and talking. All right, Coco. Devin. Well, several Bloomfield Hills High School students are in some big trouble tonight, right at the end of the school year. District says they hacked into the district student information system to tweak grades and a whole lot more. Larry Spruill live at the high school right now, and he's talked to the superintendent today. Larry. Yeah, Devin, we talked one on one for about 20 minutes today, and he tells me that they just found out about this about a couple of weeks ago. He says the students used their laptops to break into the main system. Several Bloomfield Hills High School students are in trouble Thursday after they hacked into the main system. School leaders say they changed grades, attendance records, and refunded lunch purchases. Well, it's always disappointing when you find out that your students have done something that uh, you don't teach, that isn't part of your core values and society's core values. And that's my first sensibility was to be offended by that. Superintendent Robert Glass sent out an email informing the school district about what happened and how. Since then, they were able to identify the students behind the hack. Uh, one of our employees who uses the system um, noticed something unusual in, when, upon logging in and then uh, asked some questions, referred it to our help desk. They started digging and uh, found out what was going on. Now, Dr. Glass tells me due to privacy laws, they could not release the names of the students involved, but he did want to address the issue head on, relaying this message. Uh, we wanted to be proactive and let people know what we knew, uh, what we were doing about it to give them comfort, to give them a sense of um, order and stability so that their minds weren't filling in the blanks with things that they may have wondered about. I mean, we owe it to them, right, to tell them what's happened, what we're doing about it, how we're uh, making things right with everyone. 
And although we do not know the punishment the students are facing, we do know that they are looking at federal charges. And once again, the school district is working with law enforcement. We're live in Bloomfield Hills High School tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. Uh, Larry, I'm assuming that the, the grades, the attendance records, that it's all been changed back now? Well, Devin, it did take some time for them to figure out who was behind it and yeah. what all happened here. But they did change the grades and the attendance records back. Got them just in time at the end of the year. All right, Larry. We're following a developing story on the big island of Hawaii. Kilauea erupted from its summit crater earlier this morning, sending ash 30,000 feet into the air. Take a look at this time lapse video of the eruption captured by an observation tower webcam. Thankfully, the explosion only lasted a few minutes and the ash coverage was minimal. This comes after at least 125 shallow earthquakes shook Kilauea Summit Crater yesterday. Although these quakes didn't really do much damage, it fuels belief that a massive steam explosion is indeed imminent. A tailor in Livonia accused of sexually assaulting several men while fitting them for work uniforms has been arraigned on new charges. 57-year-old Majed Wozni was a tailor at Alley Brothers Uniforms on Middle Belt Road, previously arraigned on two separate counts back in March, but now faces seven new counts of fourth degree criminal sexual conduct. The new charges uh, stem from alleged incidents that occurred between March 30th and April 9th. Victims between the ages of 33 and 69. Wozni will be back in court on May 31st. A dangerous hazard has just been sitting there for weeks along the side of a street on Detroit's east side. This light pole was down three weeks ago during the windstorm, and it's just been sitting there ever since. It's happening on Beaconsfield near Outer Drive, and as our Sean Lay shows us, it has neighbors worried for two specific reasons. Neighbors here on Beaconsfield tell us this light pole fell about three weeks ago during that windstorm. As you can see, it's still down. Grass is now growing over it. The problem is this is the only light for this stretch of Beaconsfield and neighbors here rely on. They're sprucing up lawns on Beaconsfield, getting set to take prom pictures tomorrow night. Some might take a street light for granted, but not here. The one pole that lights this block blew down three weeks ago, and it is still down. What do you think when you look at this? Dangerous. Dangerous. Dangerous for the kids. You have kids that walk to school. You have kids that's younger that play. They can't ride their bikes on this side. Sheila Calvin got a sex offender alert on her phone today. There are condoms near the down pole next to a burned out house. Come on, baby. Kids are all over, and protecting those kids is the number one priority here. And the light is a big part of that protection. So what would it mean to get the light back? It will mean a, a lot, lot, but our main concern in our community is safety. We have kids in this community. We, we, we love our kids and we love mm -hmm. this community, but we can't let our kids come out if it's unsafe. Detroit Public Lighting says they never knew about the poll because neighbors called DTE instead. It's unclear if DTE didn't alert public lighting, but now help is on the way to bring light back to a block that doesn't need to be in the dark. So them kids need to be protected. They most certainly do. So here is the very latest. We've been on the phone today with Public Lighting. They have a crew right there on Beaconsfield right now removing the old pole. The new pole and light will be up by the time it gets dark tomorrow or at the latest on Monday. Detroit Public Lighting urging neighbors and taking this opportunity to say they get poles back up between three to five days. So they want people to report problems. The number for Detroit Public Lighting, 313-324-324. 8290, or you can report problems to PLADetroit.org if you have internet access. But light will be shining there again on Beaconsfield soon, Kimberly. So, Sean, have neighbors, uh, they've been doing anything differently without that street light for the past, what, three weeks now? They really have. There's lots of kids on the street. Yeah. They've been keeping them far away from it since it does cover a sidewalk. Also, when it gets dark, kids inside. It gets very dark in that stretch. That's the only light. So they rely on it. So kids inside at night uh, in the summertime. So they're getting ready to play outside. So the, the light's very important to them. Yeah, as I said, very dangerous. OK, Sean, thanks. And while that power pole belongs to Detroit Public Lighting, DTE infrastructure got hit just as hard during that storm. Ahead at six, we're headed out with DTE crews as they make badly needed improvements aimed at keeping the lights on.
Been a while in coming, but a tentative deal has been struck with Caesars Windsor and its workers. Employees could soon return to work at the Casino Hotel after what has now been a 42 day long labor strike. Casino and hotels been shut down since April 5th. That's when employees rejected uh, what was thought at the time to be a tentative agreement. Workers were demanding a pay increase and job security. The deal now goes to the union for a vote and that will take place tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. A bad rollover crash on 8 Mile today. Happened at the intersection of 8 Mile and DeQuinder. That's where a FedEx truck collided with a van. The crash caused the van to roll over and caused the FedEx truck to leak diesel fuel onto the road. Police are still investigating. Nearly half a century after Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 ignited their career with a successful Motown audition, the city of Detroit will officially commemorate the group's local history. Indeed, a stretch of Randolph Street in the city's theater district is going to be renamed Michael Jackson Avenue. Ceremony will be held on the site of June, uh, on June 15th as part of the Detroit Music Weekend Festival. The surviving Jacksons will be headlining that festival. Nice tribute. About that. Uh, it's the dinnertime staple that has been pulled from store shelves now for weeks. New tonight, the CDC is out with an important update about the safety of romaine lettuce. Also, he walks in with his hood on, pulls a gun. New here at 5, police in St. Clair Shores said they've got a very violent, busy robber on the loose. And he's only targeting one very specific type of location. We'll have that too. Andrew's in for Ben tonight. Andrew. Kimberly and Devin, beautiful sunshine out there, warm, temperatures well into the 70s in many areas, a little cooler to our north, and there are flood concerns. We'll detail those flood concerns for a significant portion of the region, and when's our next chance of rain? I'm tracking some weekend rain for you in your weather forecast. Car insurance rates, even from one side of the street to the other, driving people insane. And they steady going up, 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 up. So what can be done? There are more discounts out there. Maybe the only thing that you can do coming up next.